I once again put on the hidden camera spy glasses of absolute sexual charisma and uh, went to a thrift store and did every single clothing item in the men's section in that relatively small thrift store. We are starting with the suits. Dumphy is nothing at all. Jose Bank is ass. If you find it at the bins, pick it up. It's okay. Jeffrey Bean is ass. When I say the bins, I mean the Goodwill outlets where you pay by the pound. It's much cheaper. Perry Ellis is ass. Club room is uh, ass room. Macy's, if you find a Macy's tag, it's probably not worth it. Towncraft is uh, not good. Claiborne is bad. I don't think I have ever sold Claiborne. Maybe one shirt a long time ago. That is Michael Kors. Do not be seduced by the brand name. Michael Kors has not been a great seller for me. You can definitely make money off of it. I think their handbags make more money than their clothing. The menswear kind of sucks. Calvin Klein definitely sucks. Almost never sell it. That's a clothing store tag. Glenwick is an old vintage ass brand. Johnson & Co. It's a, I think a Hong Kong tailor. Harbor View. I just realized I, there's a pair of pants by Harbor View in this video later. I'm not familiar. I did look Harbor View up and it was nothing. Alfani, definitely nothing. Botany 500 is nothing. Franco Uomo, I don't think is anything. That is a tag for an old vintage uh, consignment shop, I think. Paul Dion, I don't know to be anything. I believe it is ass. Hickey Freeman, uh, if you find a recent or current tag for Hickey Freeman and it's the right piece, it can be worth some pretty good money. If it's made with Laura Piana fabric, it can be worth pretty good money. But those vintage tags, um, typically worth skipping. Cellini's nothing. This is a clothing store, I think. Regardless, that is nothing. This is Cavelli, which is nothing. Austin Reed, I double checked this and it is in fact bad. Um, I left this behind. If you find two-piece suits from mid-range brands and up for under 10 bucks, probably worth it. It's hard to not make money as long as the demand is reasonable and you're willing to price at around 50 bucks, you can still flip suits. Uh, hard shafter marks, just leave it behind. Don't sell it at all anymore unless it's something really extraordinary. Habend or Habond, however that is pronounced, is ass. Joseph Abid is ass. Another Michael Kors. We spit on Michael Kors. That is a blazer. So the navy blue fabric, most of them or a lot of them are navy blue. That's the most common color made of wool with metal buttons that have a contrast with the um, piece, mostly gold. Can be worth more. So I did look up the Michael Kors and it was probably worth around 40 bucks, 30, 40 bucks maybe. Brooks Brothers, I looked this up too. And there were, uh, the, the prices weren't that good. I have to take back what I just said about just pick up suits regardless. I mean, look them up first. So this unfortunately had comps that were just too low. They were selling for like 40 bucks. Some Brooks Brothers suits can be pretty good. And this is redundant. I didn't realize there was overlap with the beginning of the filming. So we saw these already. And here's where I realize it. So we're over to the motion sickness part of the video. And these are the pants slash slacks. This is one of the most uh, aggravating sections of any retail thrift store to shop because you have to play this game with the clamps on the hangers, depending on how they hang the pants. It's always kind of sloppy and takes longer, but it can pay off because they're not gone through nearly as much as other sections. I know I'm talking over some of these brands. I, you didn't see me pick it up, it's ass. Parkland, we know is ass. Um, but yeah, less competition on pants and you can find some slacks that are worth some pretty good money as you will see coming up. And that happens, it just is constantly pulling off the hangers. 
Hagar is pretty bad. If you find it new in tags, it's worth it. There's Harbor View. That might have been the matching. Yeah, that's the matching pants with the suit jacket, maybe. Although, no, it's not. This is brown. Color matching on the um, Sex Panther spyglasses are not that great. Um, is not that great. Hagar, we know, is not to be trifled with. Um, even if that the Harbor view whatever pants had matched I would have left it behind just because the brand is nothing um what is the, uh yep here we go going on a goose chase there it is Bill Blass is can you guess it's Bill Ass here we go first hit of the day and I see the brand on the snap you cannot see it but you're about to get ready here comes Roan a pair of long roan pants. Didn't even bother looking it over. Five bucks. Should have been a total no-brainer and would have been had there not been a big slit cut in the fabric underneath one of the pockets. Really a shame. Had that not been the case, I would have paid definitely 10 bucks for it at least, maybe 15. Zanella is marginal. If I found this at the bins, absolutely, I would pick up Zanella. If you find it with really nice fabric like Laura Piana or Vitali Barbera's Canonico fabric, I would say yes, get it. Uh, otherwise, it's really, uh, it's like 50% sell through and the prices fluctuate up and down a lot, sort of all over the map, but it's a decent brand. It's a little bit of a higher end menswear brand and you do find it fairly often. So if you can get it for cheap, I think it's probably pretty, pretty good. Louis Raphael, I don't know to be anything. This brand, however, is really good. Canali, I pick up suits, definitely two-piece suits I pick up, and I've done pretty well with these pants, the dress pants. The thriller. My neighbors. Um, and you uh, you do have to be careful, like the vintage tags I don't think sell as well as the more recent ones, but that's true of most formal men's clothing. The more recent the tag, the better it will sell, the more it will be worth for the most part. This is probably Perry Ellis or something, but I don't see the tag there. Another frustrating thing about these dress pants slash slacks, sometimes they're just not branded because they're suit pants and the brand is meant to be in the suit jacket. This is some uh, Linea Natural. That's an Italian brand, maybe. I didn't bother to look it up. What is this? Another nothing. Frenetic hunt for nothing. Giovanni, I looked this up and it wasn't anything. Don't be seduced by the made in Italy designation. All kinds of brands are made in Italy. It doesn't mean that it's worth money. In fact, uh, Kirkland Signature pants are made in Italy. It doesn't mean anything. This is 32 degree performance, which is, I, like, I again, would have picked this up at the bins, but really low end stuff. Uh, these are long pants. Those can be marketed as golf pants, and those will be okay sellers, but not spending five bucks or nine bucks or whatever they wanted for it. Exposed. It's a blurry tag. Looked it up and couldn't find it. It's frustrating with these brands that have generic-ish words in them. It just oftentimes is not worth the investment of time to try to figure out comps, try to pinpoint the exact comps, which is an experiment that I just ran there on the phone. Lauren Ralph Lauren is one of the bottom tier sub brands of Ralph Lauren chaps. It's a little bit better than chaps, but not by much. And it's mostly women's clothing with some men's. In the menswear manifesto, I have a breakdown of every single known sub tag of Ralph Lauren. The link to that is in the description if you don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, Jack Nicholas, and that's Hart Schaffner Marks. Vintage, maybe, maybe th those would have been worth like 20, 25, but I just didn't even bother to look it up. Chaps, I, I don't pick up. I don't even pick up chaps at the bins, really, unless it's like a huge size. This is an absolute yes at the bins. Hurley. Uh, board shorts, I love selling. And maybe it's because I live in San Diego and I'm able to find so many of them. 
but now is the time to stock up on these things while they're still cheap and the competition is, well, not that they're going to be cheap or priced up or whatever, but they're going to be more abundant now than in the summer. And you'll see more pairs later. I really like selling board shorts. Those were military issue shorts. I probably should have tried to look them up, but again, I just didn't want to invest the time to try to find them. Uh, and military issue clothing is a whole, it, it's one of the only clothing niches that I really don't know all that much about in terms of men's clothing. So there is potential value there, but you kind of have to hunt for it. Uh, Vicky's, yes at the bins, no here. I have had pretty just consistent fortune flipping Dickies if it's priced pretty low and I could still turn a profit. Nordstrom is really not good, the the mainline Nordstrom. Uh, another Lauren Ralph Lauren. I do pick up Lauren Ralph Lauren at the bins, but definitely not at retail thrifts unless it's like cashmere or something. Uh, these are more long golf pants. Excuse me, um, not a good brand. But again, at the bins. Kirkland, I don't touch ever under any circumstances. Unless it's cashmere. I think, uh, well, Club Room is Macy's, but I've found Kirkland Signature cashmere that has sold. 100% cashmere. So under that circumstance, yes. Van Heusen is... Um, just don't even bother. Another Zanella. A lot of Zanella. That is a weird vintage Levi's. Slates by Levi's. I did look these up. They're just kind of ratty slacks, and the sell-through wasn't all that good, so I left them left them behind. Uh, a lot of people commented on the last video about Vero that they've gotten in trouble shipping Levi's products globally, internationally. That has cropped up a lot, so beware. Toad & Co. is like low middling tier as a brand. This is new with tags, and I did look up this pair of pants because it had a um, cut name on it. I don't remember what it was. Um, but they, they ended up being worth maybe like 40 bucks or whatever, and at that price point, I just didn't want to mess with it. I'm also pretty bloated. I have a big, big fat death pile right now, so I'm being really selective about what I buy. Docker's new with tags for five bucks is a yes. I didn't bother to look up the cut. It is an older cut, potentially vintage because they have the, the um, hemmed cuffs, I think it's called, where they're like rolled up and they're pleated. But I've done pretty well with new attacks dockers. It's one of the only times I will touch it. Um, those two last brands were not good. Gary Player is ass. I double checked my memory because I don't see it all that much. I did look these up and confirm that they were in fact of an ass. And... Um, Gap, definitely a pass. Hagar, just straight pass. Maybe if you get a bunch of it and you lot it up, you can flip it. This is a new brand to me. It is in motion right now. What is it? Wings plus horns. I looked it up. The sell through numbers were strong enough to motivate me to want to pick it up. I think it was only like five or six bucks. It was this pair of chinos. I ended up throwing them back later because they had a little stain on them. Would have gotten them otherwise. This is Lanificio di and Ambrosio or something. It's a, look like it might be a valuable material tag. Uh, sometimes you find these fabric manufacturers that can be worth money. And I looked it up and it, it wasn't. So whatever that was, don't buy it. That illegible fabric brand you want to leave behind. Calvin Klein, we despise for the most part. Vintage Calvin Klein can do okay. I've, I've said a few times the big spell out front stuff uh, with tacky graphics can can do okay. LL Bean, I was hopeful for these. I thought they might be made in USA or made in Maine. Both of those tags can bring some pretty good value, but this was, I think, made in Malaysia or Mexico or Vietnam. Another Zanella. These are probably all the same size. They probably all belong to the same guy. So I could have picked all of them up for probably five bucks each and put them in a lot. But again, I am not hurting for inventory and that's fairly time consuming. So no thanks, just gonna pass. 
Dockers, no. Perry Ellis, no. Lewis, Raphael, uh, no. Love those hangers. Had this been five bucks, maybe. Ten bucks, no. Really bad brand. Britches wigs me out when I find it. Because I, I always forget, is it good, is it bad? It's bad. It's a vintage brand. I don't think I've ever sold it. I've looked it up probably 20 times, but I don't think I've ever actually sold it. Dockers, no. This is mostly what you're gonna find in the pants section. Gap, Dockers, Perry Ellis. Dockers. That anchor coming up is the Dockers logo as well. Dockers, yeah, we got it. All right. Dockers, more recent tag. What was this again? Oh yeah, Savain, yeah, it's made it into <laughs> so many of these videos. And this is kind of a vintage-y, canvas-y type pair of slacks that I probably would have gotten at the bins because aesthetically it's kind of interesting, but not here. I think this was a reflex, right? Yep. Wow. I'm such a genius. Yeah, I, this was a new one to me. I looked it up because it was new with tags and it was only five bucks. Uh, super frustrating brand to try to pin down. I spent maybe 30 seconds on it and realized it was a fool's errand trying to find reflex pants. What is that? Gap, I think. Uh, cool. I don't even know what the brand on the last one was. Uh, this is unbranded. Got a weird metal button there. Pants, not really that exciting uh, section until uh, you find a canali. Oh God, and just all of this clasping, all of this messing with the hangers. It's stressing me out even just watching it. Uh, Dickies back there. I will reiterate, get it at the bins. Don't get it for retail prices. I would say like two bucks or less, you're pretty safe with Dickies. Um, Hagar, I'm guessing. I don't know. It's either Dockers or Hagar. That is vintage Dockers. Would contemplate it at the bins maybe, I, I don't know. Do Dockers, just one of those big fat ass brands that is unavoidable. It's just absolutely everywhere. It's like bed bugs in the uh, pants section. You just cannot escape the Dockers and the Hagar. That's Uniqlo. Would have gotten them at the bins, not gonna get them here. Uniqlo is one of my top fast fashion brands that I like to resell. Most fast fashion brands do not carry any resale value, really. Uniqlo does okay. LL Bean, these are not vintage, but they are jeans in a pretty good size. That's 36 by 30. And they were six bucks. And that's a yes. I did double check just to make sure the market was still as healthy as I remember it being, and it was. So I could probably flip those for around 35. These are rustlers. Rustlers are uh, really not uh, worth it. Faded Glory, we, I think, know all about Faded Glory and its nefarious ways. Fruit of the Loom. Give you three guesses if that's good or not. International Concepts, one of the most obnoxious and bad brands. Another bed bug brand. Um, bum, 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 bum. Is it Hagar? Is it Dockers? We'll never know. 
Marks and Spencer is a department store. St. Michael, I think, is the main line for the department store. I've sold it in Vintage Women's before, but not here. This is where we will pause part one before I make my little way over to the shirt section. So that's coming up in part two. Hope that you learned and enjoyed. Thank you for watching.